So why did you agree to be Doctor Who? Because it was written by Russell T. Davis, primarily. You weren't a fan then? Wasn't um, wanting to be no, Doctor No, I wasn't Who. a fan as a child, no. I was playing out when Doctor Who was on as a child. It didn't... There were key moments that, that I would what, tune in for, and that would be a regeneration. Because as a child I was fascinated by the concept of a character remaining the same but looking different. I thought that was fascinating. And, and secondary to that, I wanted to see how they would do it, technically. And the other time I would tune in was the inside of the Dalek. I, as a child, I thought that was mesmerising. This idea of this thing that had been so frightening and so threatening was actually pathetic. I thought that, to, as a child, that was fascinating. So you didn't see an awful lot of Doctor Who because there weren't many regenerations, were there? No, no. But I seem to re remember, you know, it'd be in the press that it was going to happen, you know. Like it'd be in the press that the Daleks were, were going to take the lid off a Dalek. Um, and I, I'm old enough to remember not William Hartnell, but the great Patrick Troughton. And I have a, a strong visual memory of his face, a black and white episode, and I do think Doctor Who looks... I think it looks great in colour, but I think it works in black and white as well. Now, your Doctor Who, he's got a nice northern accent and uh, remarkably different from the others. Did you go back at any point and go, you know, I'm going to keep that bit of Doctor Who? On which means no, can no, you jump? I, I, I feel the, the old series... I think uh, what we've jettisoned is the sexism of the underwritten female role. And also, you know, the defining characteristics of Doctor Who, are, to a certain extent, are heroism and in intelligence. And they seem to be being an equation drawn with RP, received pronunciation, that that was the, the, the sole area, really. And, and, you know, I felt that it was time to, along with the, kick, the sexism, it was time for that to be kicked out, you know. And, of course, the key element of Doctor Who is the monsters. Um, you're acting against monsters most of the time, are you, and Daleks and uh, all the villains? Um, yeah, the key element is pe things like the, da the Daleks, the Slitheen, the Gelf, um, the Mox of Balhoon, the Any face Any Cybermen of coming back? We're not, we're not, no. Cybermen, Cybermen, you have to wait for the Cybermen, but you get everything else. And what you get is Russell has created a whole ar new array of villains, creatures of his own, uh, to add to the uh, gallery of the last 40 years. Now, some people, when they look back at the old episodes, they laugh at them and say, oh, you know, the, the Daleks being made with a sink plunder and things like that. Mm. Um, you've got to compete against some big budget American mm. science fiction. I mean, kids are a lot more sophisticated mm. these days, aren't they? I think they are more sophisticated in terms of what they're taking visually, but I think you can still touch them. What a lot of the science fiction programmes we're going up against don't have is the kind of central message of Doctor Who, which is love life. Um, you know, it's it unashamedly emotional about... The Doctor's message seems to be, you have a short life, make sure it's a happy one and seize every moment and, and accept life in all its forms, which is a central message with him. You know, he doesn't react with horror when he sees a blue three-headed monster. He, he reacts with wonder, and I think that's a very important message to send out to children. Uh, and a lot of the series is a kind of the series you're talking about, Buffy, it's kind of postmodern irony and stuff, whereas this is, this retains that kind of innocence, the innocence of its message, but also we've brought into line the product. As a child watching it, I was put off by some of the low production val values. I don't have a camp sensibility. When the sets wobbled, it meant that I, the, w the world wasn't real. I didn't believe in it, so I went out playing. Whereas I'd stay with Star Trek because the production values were high, as far as I could see and the world was consistent. Uh, but we, in, this new, in, our, in our new series, we've, we're in line with all that. The production values are very high. We had a good budget, and we had, most importantly, we had brilliant people working on it at the crew level who've created. There's no wobbly sets. Bit yeah. of wobbly acting, no wobbly sets. Now, you have to be prepared, of course, as soon as you become the doctor, um, you will, for the rest of your life, have a large number of fans who want to write letters to you. Have you... I might have enemies. <laughs> might have a large number of enemies. Depends what they feel about me. But you're prepared. It's over the years. It's developed quite a... And there's a supposedly 8,000 committed fans out there who've stayed year after year after year. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, encountered any of them so far in their home? Yeah, I mean, I'm quite efforts? fortunate because I've been in the business varying degrees of kind of exposure uh, for over the last 18 years. And so I, kn I know a, a little what that's like. When I was cast in the role, I, met, I immediately met a number of Hoovians, for one, you know, should we call them Hoovians? And they have been unfailingly polite 
and gentle and encouraging to me and I'm very grateful to it. They've been around the set, they've watched, watched us filming and I think they're, they're passionate and grateful that the series is returning like, and I've enjoyed every encounter with them. They're, they're not interested in any of the, the, your, the details of your personal life. What, what they want to know is what it's like being a Time Lord. And I share, you know, I'm like that about reggae and soul music. I have that gene, that kind of slightly obsessive thing. So it's been a pleasure. And I, I, I genuinely hope that they're, they're happy with what I and we have done. Now, the whole point about the Doctor is he lasts for quite a long time. I mean, you've done 13 episodes. They're not going to be happy until you've done year after year, you know, become a Tom Baker figure. Are you going to stay with Doctor Who for a long time, do you think? Um, I can't answer that. It's impossible. All, I'm, all I can think about at the moment, and I literally stopped filming on Saturday, is this first series. I can't, uh, can't possibly be drawn on that. So we can't even... You don't regenerate at the end, I've then. done... I've, if you think about it, 13, 45-minute episodes in the old days is two series. I've, done, I've just done two series in eight months, really. You could, you could broadcast seven of these and six next year. You've got two series. 45 minutes, not half hours. I've done two series already. Um, is it going to be scary? I mean, it goes on at 7 o'clock on a Saturday. It's obviously aimed at children. Is it going to be an adult programme or is it going to be a kids' programme? Hopefully it's going to be a, a programme that the family will watch together, like all the best television. Um, uh, I think my, I would like 8 to 12-year-olds to take me into their heart. I don't think I've got much of a chance with Tom Baker and John Pertwee fans. And I respect that, that fidelity really. I respect that loyalty. I, pro I have it myself to Sean Connery as James Bond. But I'm hoping that 8 to 12-year-old children will I'll be their first doctor and they'll love me the way people love Baker. Will they be watching you from behind the sofa? They'll be watching me from behind the sofa, the futon. Yeah, I think I, it, it's frightening because it's so well, apart from the visual impact of the monsters and the brilliance of the creations, this is a very well written series and it's the psychology that's frightening, particularly for instance when the Doctor confronts the Daleks, there's a whole thing about is the Doctor actually as bad as the Daleks because he's prepared to exterminate them willy-nilly. So the psychology is very well drawn, and the children will listen to that as well as look. You know, if you make good television for children, the adults will come. That's the way I think about it. Now, in the 1980s, Doctor Who died a long, slow death into kind of ridicule and really wobbly. I sets. believe so. I wasn't aware of it, but I believe but, so. But you know, even Doctor Who fans, they they look on with horror at sort of what how it how it disappeared. Why did it have to come back now? Why come back now when it's a, you know, seemingly really pretty best fitted in the TV heaven? Um, I think perhaps the reason it died is because the quality of the writing. All television programmes basically are about the right. If the script isn't there, it doesn't matter how good your director, your actor, your production values. So obviously there's problems with the scripts. This came back because a brilliant, our be one of our most brilliant writers wanted to address it, Russell T. Davis. But it also came back because it is a fantastic idea. Uh, Sidney Newman, I believe, had the original idea for the series, and he's obviously lifted from H.G. Wells' short story, The Time Traveller. It is a brilliant idea. and um, A character, a mysterious character, who can travel forwards and backwards in space and who is primarily concerned with prolonging the life of our world. It's a beautifully simple idea and I think that's why it's got legs. And why did you want to be the Doctor? Because Russell T Davis wrote it and because it was an audience and an area of television that I hadn't, I hadn't worked in, I've not had the privilege to act for children really um, and because I'm constantly told that I'd, I'm not funny and I'm not charming and they were some of the demands in the role so I wanted to I felt it was a big gamble. There's two reasons to do it, Russell T Davis and the gamble, and I like a gamble. I, I think it's important as an actor or in any sphere of life to do the things that frighten you most. Does this feel like a big event? Do you feel like there's a kind of weight on your shoulders? Because it's been 15 years since it was on the TV screens, and there's a, there's a, there's a buzz about it, isn't there? Yeah, there is a buzz about it. It doesn't feel like a burden, no. It's been an absolute pleasure and a privilege to play the part and to work with that crew who are shooting as we speak. I spent the last eight months, six days a week, 14 hours a day with a group of people. 
I'm not talking about all the show-offs you're going to see at this launch or me. I'm just like the tip of an iceberg. I'm talking about the people, the cameramen, the prop men who made this program. Um, and and it's, been, it's been a privilege. It's, it's, not, it's not a burden. It was a joy to play in, really. Now, they're all going to be coming tonight to um, have the first look at the first. What sort of... It is painful when people attack it. I'll be honest with you. There's been a couple of early reviews and they've, they've attacked us. And it's painful. You accept it. You take it on the chin. But when you've worked as hard as we have, with so much love, you hope you'll get some of it back. I did just want to say that, that it is painful. I won't pretend it isn't. Because there are huge expectations from huge. people who... It's their childhoods, isn't it, yeah, that people that's are right. comparing against? And as I say, I respect that loyalty to the old series. The, the classic elements of this series are there. The Daleks, the TARDIS, the Doctor's persona, his aims, the central message of love life in all its forms are there. But certain other things, the furniture's been moved around a bit. No wobbly sets. No wobbly sets. And, you know, some of the old the old 70s stuff of the paternalistic know-all and his helpless sidekick, that's gone. And one final question. We hear the Daleks have solved the problem of conquering a planet with stairs. That's true. And, it, yeah. So that's a problem that the, none of the rest of the, never mind accents, none of the rest of the Doctors have had to face Daleks that can do that. Can you tell us how they do it? Oh, no. It'd spoil it, wouldn't it? I'm not in the spoiling business. Fantastic.